Post-production work on Get On Up was extremely complicated. Some of James Brown's performances are part of music history, but the quality wasn't great. So the sound team not only had to clean those up, but they had to do a lot of other things to try to recreate those great moments. I'm Tim Gray from Variety, and we're here at Technicolor Sound on the Paramount lot to find out exactly what went into recreating those great moments. Hit it! Well, we started off with the original tracks, whatever we could get our hands on. The music editorial department, who was supervised by Kurt Sobel, went back and found the best tracks they could for each of these performances. And often, they were live recordings. And at that point in time, the recording technique was pretty simple. You might have three microphones covering a whole band. Ah! The challenge for us was to put them to the picture. In this case, it had to be organic. It had to make you feel as though you were there. If it sound good and it feel good, then it's musical. We had a run through of the film that had just those raw tracks. And both Scott and I looked at each other afterwards thinking, oh my God, because none of it sounded like it was coming from them. It sounded like it was coming from another room. Then the music department went and actually supplemented those tracks with additional instrumentation. On a rare occasion, the sound alike, and we had to get a, a word in or something that we didn't have and it was obviously in his face and on a close-up of the actor, we had to fill it, but probably 98% of what's in the film is James Brown's performance in his voice. Take another record. Any record you got on your box at home, it ain't gonna sound like mine. At times, we were about 124 tracks wide for music alone. And then we went back and we added, of course, all the treatments on the voices and on the guitars to emulate the room, the space that it's in. If you're at the uh, Boston Gardens, I want it to sound cavernous, like there'd be a big open arena. We have small, intimate venues, so we want to make sure it sounds like that. <laughs> These are just all layers, you know, that you can get kind of foreground, midground, and background, so you can get a sense of space. Isolated post recordings, cheers, call outs, clapping, screamings, reactions to things. That was all recorded by the uh, sound editorial group and brought to us. You got the spirit in you, huh? He spoke to me and said, one day, everybody gonna know your name. Biopic about someone as dynamic as James Brown, someone that people know their music, they know their faces, a huge challenge. You wanna go down and hit you as a man and kill the fuck? There's music challenges and there's effects challenges. One of the things, the transitions to and from different time periods throughout the film, sonically wanting to be able to pull you back into a time zone with maybe pre-lapping insects from the rural woods of Georgia where he was raised. I think the challenge for me in the music sensibility was to make it believable. And then after that, it's the nuance. It's all the nuance of the period of the time. Well, I call it James Brown music because it's so far ahead of its time. It comes alive on the mix stage with all of these elements, the beautiful score, the music driving, the sound effects, the ambiences, whatever it might be. And you can transport an audience anywhere in any time with the use of sound. I think we still got mope funk in the trunk. 